Well, speaking of memories, many scriptures are tied up in our memories. And this one in particular, now I will always remember as being the scripture that I preached on that very first Sunday after we had the coronavirus shut down. Now, this week it came up in our lectionary, so it's sort of our assigned reading, but in that time, we just picked it because we needed it. And I want us to kind of remember back in those days, uh, right when they shut down Massachusetts and the country, and we were all so full of fear. None of us had ever lived through anything like that. We didn't know what this disease was going to mean for us. We didn't know who really was most affected. We didn't know how much we should be scared. We didn't know who was going to die, how many, and even if that was going to be us or someone we loved. As your pastor, I was fearful that I would be doing funerals for people I loved in this community. I had no idea what lay in store the winds and storms and chaos of that time was so all around us. And we, like those disciples in the boat, were right to be afraid. We were right to be afraid, and we were filled with fear and anxiety. But at that time, a year ago, or 15 months ago, we took comfort in the truth of this scripture that Jesus is in the boat. We might not see him, we might not remember that he's there because he's sleeping, but Jesus is in the boat. And that kind of became a refrain for us as a community. When we would feel fearful, we would remind ourselves with just that word, Jesus is in the boat. Jesus is in the boat. No matter what happens, we are not alone. And we're not gonna face this storm or any storm without the love, comfort, and calming presence of God. And we took great faith and comfort in that word. Jesus is in the boat. And that is still true today. I know many of us are facing storms entirely different right now from coronavirus, diagnoses and and all kinds of family issues or, or personal issues or work issues or trying to find work issues or trying to even find a meal issues. And we're reminded again and again that Jesus is in the boat, even in those times. But right now, the storm of coronavirus, that storm that we were facing, is in fact ending. And we're not as afraid of the coronavirus as we once were. Many of us are vaccinated or we know what precautions to take. We know what the risks are. We know so much more now. And so that that particular storm is sort of waning And uh, the end is hopefully in sight. And so my own focus on this scripture then, remembering how I once read it in light of coronavirus, it's shifting. And I'm interested more in this napping Jesus. (laughs) This God who, in the midst of this storm, decides that that is the perfect time to lay his head down and go to sleep. Because... I've had a lot of conversations with people uh, in the past few weeks, and particularly this week. It's kind of amazing how God sometimes speaks into my life or into your life in ways that, that just open the scripture up in different ways. And I've had two different lunch meetings this week with other pastors. And the number one thing that those pastors have told me is something that I don't think is unique to pastors, because I've heard it from you all, I've heard it from friends, I've heard it from family, I've heard it from everyone— And that is that we are now so tired. We are so exhausted from getting through this whole storm. Even as the winds are calming, we are a tired, tired people. I've had friends, you know, these pastor friends tell me, they say, Anna, you know, nothing is in the tank. I got nothing. I don't know what I'm going to do this summer. And... I don't think that's unique to pastors. Now tell me, tell me I'm wrong in the, in the handshake line, but I don't think that's unique to pastors. I think we're all so tired, and, and we have every right to be tired. We have lived through a really intense storm. I bet you when, that, when those disciples saw those calm waters, they were tired too after all they had just exerted, all they had just seen. But I'm curious still about then 
this napping Jesus. And the word that we might take away from this napping, resting Jesus in the midst of these storms, because we need it. We need this rest. And the question is, how are we going to find it? But here's the tricky thing about needing rest so desperately. I know this as a parent with little ones, but you all might know this too, even of yourself. What happens when you try to put down a baby that is overtired? You know, like their eyes are, you know, it's harder. It's actually harder to rest the more tired you are. Babies won't do it. We won't do it. We call that overtiredness a second wind. But I think that's a euphemism for just being way too exhausted and somehow not letting ourselves rest. That adrenaline pumps through our body. And the more rest we need, the less rest we can find. So again, I'm looking at this napping Jesus, and I'm wondering what word he might have for us and our overtired selves today. Because the more mentally and emotionally exhausted we are, the more likely are we are then, I think, to keep our anxiety high. And we see this sometimes. People are spinning a little bit in ways that, that we don't need to be spinning, either in work or mentally or emotionally. We can, we can kind of manufacture a storm for ourselves because Sometimes that dead calm is more scary than the storm was when we are coming out of it. I know that soldiers, when they are coming back from war, and I can't think of a more intense storm-like experience than soldiers who have served for months or even years in a wartime experience. Imagine the adrenaline levels that they have experienced. It's that they struggle when they come home and they experience the dead calm of ordinary civilian life, that sometimes they struggle the most. Now, we call that PTSD. And I wonder if some of us might have a little corona SD, or whatever you want to call it, a little coronavirus PTSD, where we're struggling to adjust to this dead calm, or it's not dead calm yet, but maybe this dead calm that's on the horizon. So this scripture reminds me that even in the midst of a storm, Jesus didn't actually need the dead calm to take a nap, right? Jesus didn't have to wait to calm the storm for his own ability to rest, because he, as Jesus, lived out the truth that we can learn today that rest is an act of faith. I'm going to say that again because that's the takeaway from today. Rest is an act of faith. Now, Jesus grew up as a, um, as a Jewish man, and he was a Jewish rabbi. And so this is embedded in who he was. And being the Son of God, he lived this out perfectly in his life. The truth that rest is an act of faith. Because Jews in Jesus' time took seriously the Sabbath. They knew that every seven days they needed to rest. They were required to rest, to reset not only their bodies and not only their minds, but their spirits and their faith too. Because they knew that when you take your hands off the wheel... When you stop driving with white knuckles the car of your life, you realize that God is the one who is in control. And you realize that resting and taking taking yourself out of that driver's seat allows the truth of God's love and goodness to be made known in your heart. So often we think that we are the ones who have to make everything happen We think we are the ones, the only ones, who who can change the world, and that is true, and this world is bigger than us. And God is holding all of it and all of us. Jesus is in everyone's boat. And when we rest, when we allow ourselves to rest, even when the storm is brewing, Even when the storm is at its highest 
level, even in the dead calm, when we take the time to rest when our bodies tell us we need it, we are living out an act of faith. So I hope that today we recognize that there might be other storms going on in our lives. Coronavirus might be ending, but there's other things happening in each and every one of our lives, and that never lets up. We've had some hard news this week, beloved church members receiving hard diagnoses, all kinds of things happening, and good things happening too. And even in those moments, we have to allow ourselves the opportunity to live our faith and rest when our bodies tell us we need to rest. That's what Jesus did in that storm, and that's what we can do too. This weekend, we're also reminded that... um, That rest can also be an act of resistance, is part of the fabric of life. Yesterday, many people celebrated Juneteenth, and we had a wonderful Juneteenth celebration here in Walpole that our church played a role in making possible, and it was so much fun. (laughs) It was so much pure fun and joy to be together, and it was a good reminder that life isn't always serious, even when you take it seriously. For a long time, folks in the black community have taught us that their own joy is an act of resistance. And there's a term folks use, black joy, to remind us that, that living life fully, having fun, and resting is part of a life of resistance. And I think we can learn a lot from that. So this day, I invite you to live fully, take the naps that you need, and remember that while Jesus is in the boat in every single storm that you face, that sometimes taking a step back and resting is the greatest act of faith there is. May it be so, and amen.